Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. This is our series that is dedicated to helping you save money on the wargaming hobby. And on this episode, we're going to show you guys how to cheaply as well as quickly paint up an orc truck. So as you can see here, this is the photo of what the orc truck will look like by the time it's all done. Uh, you could use this for games of Warhammer 40,000. You could use this in Speed Freaks if you want to, um, or in my case, I'm going to actually use this orc truck for a game of uh, Nicaragua. Um, as you guys are aware, we're working on a Nicaragua narrative campaign that is set in the Ash Wastes, and in that Nicaragua campaign setting, it's going to be vehicles based. So all of our gang members will have vehicles, and they'll fight it out in a very Mad Max style kind of gaming system that uh, that I created for my friends and I to play. Um, as as always, you could always go down below in the description. You can actually find the uh, links to the uh, to the downloads to my blog site to get those rules if you want to do exactly the same thing for your campaign. But anyway, so this. This is what the end result of the arc truck could look like. This is going to be for my gang, uh, the jury of House Orlock, and the color for my gang is blue. And the grand total that's going to cost you guys to paint it this way using our cheapskate method is going to be twenty-nine dollars and ninety-one cents uh, total investment. That's assuming, of course, that you don't already have these materials on hand already. And they have to go out and buy it all. All right. Now, if you compare this cheapskate method, the grand total of twenty-nine ninety-one, to what Citadel and Army Painter would recommend that you purchase, we're talking about a difference in savings of one hundred and thirty-three dollars and ninety-nine cents. So that is a hunk of change that you can use for something else or not spend it at all. So because of that, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to show you guys how to paint up this truck very quickly and cheaply. So that being said, let's get this video on a roll. All right, so the very first thing you do, of course, is to prime your miniature. In this case, I suggest you use Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer. It is the cheapest can of primer I could find. Um, I got it at my local Walmart, runs me $3.99. And all you need to do, of course, is just dust the entire uh, surface area for the entire miniature in this black. Now, if you notice in this picture, I've actually done a sub-assembly with my truck, and I highly suggest you do exactly the same thing uh, when it comes to painting this thing, because there's a lot of nooks and crannies in the truck miniature, and it can get kind of frustrating to paint it up. So as you can see, what I've done is actually have not attached the wheels, so I kept the wheels separate. I also kept the cupola that's attached to the uh, passenger side where you usually get attached weapons and things. I've kept that assembly totally separated. I also separated the chassis where the frame of the vehicle is with the engine block on it. And then of course I did exactly the same thing with the cab and the truck bed. I left that off uh, completely on the side as well. So just give it all the quick once over real fast with uh, black crystalline paint and then you're ready to move on. So the first thing we're working on is the tires real quick. And the first thing you do with that is give it a nice dry brush. The black already does most of the base coating for you anyways. So because that, all we need to do now is just dry brush it. And I will warn you guys ahead of time, uh, this whole method for painting this truck, it requires a lot of dry brushing is what it's used for. That's because you want to create a lot of weathering effects on this. So in this case, what I did is I just did a quick dry brush using Anita's gray acry uh, acrylic gray color that runs you 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. All I did, of course, is just give a nice heavy dry brush to all the tires to give it a nice weather look. As you can see, the gray caught all the raised surfaces of the miniature, adding some detail in the highlighting, and at the same time left that dark black primer on the undercoats right beneath in the recessed areas. And the next thing I did after that, of course, is get another dry brush real quick with uh, Slate Blue. It's also made by Anita's Acrylic. Runs at 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And I did exactly the same thing. Just did a really light dry brush with the Slate Blue color to give it kind of even more weathered, more faded look to it. Because the campaign takes place in the Ash Waste, which is basically just a bunch of ash out there in the, in the deserts of Micromunda, I thought it just kind of be an appropriate color to use to make it look really neat. And uh, that's all we do right now for the tires. We will come back for the tires later when we work on the metallic paints. But for right now, for the base coat and the dry brushing, we're Pretty much done with the tires at this point. So the next thing we're going to work on now is on the cab of the truck as well, which is basically going to be the passenger driver's uh, seats and as well as a truck bed in the back. So you can see in this one, I just did a really quick paint job on these. What I did is I grabbed a can of Krylon Colormaster Satin Finished Oxford Blue Spray Paint, and all I did is I just gave it the once over real quick. I just put two thin layers of the uh, Krylon Colormaster all over the entirety of the cab. I did the truck bed, the cab uh, underneath it, the sides, all of it. So basically what I did is I just sprayed the entire thing once, uh, let it dry, it took about about 10 minutes for it to dry and then I did a second coat right on top of it and then before you know it it's completely done what this does is that because most of the truck is going to be blue anyways it just kind of takes care of a lot of the painting services and saves us a lot of time as well and since it's a nice satin finish it has a nice matte finish when it dries so it's a perfect thing to work on next so once you get that done time to move on to the uh, chassis as well as the frame of the truck 
All right, so now we're gonna work on the chassis as well as the frame of the truck, as well as the engine area. We're also gonna work on the cupola that goes in the passenger side of the vehicle as well. And for this stage, you could use a heavy dry brush. So what I recommend to use is using Folk Arts Gunmetal Gray. It's a nice dark gunmetal color that runs about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And as you can see in this photo, I just did a really heavy dry brush right on top of all the black as well. Now, the reason why we're not painting this and why we're dry brushing is because we want this structure to look very weathered and worn. So because of that, the black undercoating with the dry brushing of the silver on top already makes it look kind of weathered and faded like it's been through some stuff like it's been through some erosion and things and that's the kind of look we want to go with on that one so all you need to do of course is just do a really heavy dry brush and then you're ready to move on so just to add another additional bit of highlighting on this one, I then dry brushed the entire miniature with Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. That runs about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And this is a really good product to use as well. And the reason why is because it's a very bright silver. So all I just did, of course, is just do a really nice, easy dry brush with this all over all the parts that I did in gunmetal gray. Helps to pick out some of the raised surfaces like the rivets and leaving the uh, leaving the darker metal, gunmetal color in the, uh, in the recessed areas as well. At the same time, also adds a little bit of a shine and depth to it. And uh, that's all you really need to do for all the silver parts on the vehicle for the frame chassis the engine as well as the cupola so all you gotta do is just do that real quick dry brushing and then we're ready to move on to the truck bed as well as the truck cab so now for the truck bed and the truck cab, uh, just to catch some of the, add some more detail to it, we just did a quick dry brush real quick with Slate Blue by Anita's Acrylic Paint. This is the same stuff we used earlier to dry brush the tires. And what you need to do is just do the once over for the entirety of the structure. So for example, the little boom sticks I have right there, as well as the uh, the uh, pole cat pole vaulting uh, pikes that I have left there on the, on the back of the truck bed, I dry brushed that. I dry brushed the entire cab as well as the entirety of the truck bed as well. And the reason why is because this slate blue does a really good job of catching the raised surfaces and highlighting it uh, for the while well, leaving that dark uh, oxford blue color into the recesses of miniature. So just do a quick dry brush with the slate blue to the degree of lightness that you prefer, and then you're ready to move on. And now it's time to go back to the uh, chassis as well as the frame. Um, on the chassis of the vehicle, as you can see there, I have like this kind of like uh, uh, armor plating that's in the front of the chassis right behind the uh, little ra uh, ramming prow that I have for the vehicle. So because of that, I want to make that armor plating blue to add a little bit of detail to the frame to make it look like it matches the rest of the truck bed. So what I use, of course, is Apple Barrel's True Navy. It's an acrylic paint that you can get your local Walmart. It runs you about 50 cents. And all I did, of course, is do two thin layers of True Navy over the entirety of the surface of the armor panels that I want to be blue. Um, just two thin layers will probably do it for the most part as well or you can add more if you want to add a richer blue but since i'm going for kind of like a weathered look two thin coats is perfectly fine for me so just add your two thin coats and you're ready to move on for a dry brush and just like the cab as well as the truck bed, all I did of course is just a really quick dry brush using Anita's Acrylic Slate Blue. It's exactly the same color I used to dry brush the cab. I did exactly the same thing with the armor plates as well. As you can see, it brings up the highlights for the raised surfaces like the rivets that covering the armor panels, while at the same time leaving that darker navy blue into the recesses of the miniature. Now if you're worried about the blue of the armor plating from the True Navy matching the Oxford blue that's on the truck bed, I recommend not worrying about it too much. The reason why is because these two colors are extremely similar, I cannot tell the difference between the two of them so it ends up being a perfect match which is all kinds of good. So moving on to the rest of the frame, the next thing to do of course now is start picking out some of the detail aspects that are attached to the uh, framing of the vehicle. In this case, I've attached a heavy stubber from the House Orlock gang sprue to the uh, engine block to make it look like it's a synchronized machine gun that's attached to the engine block. At the same time, I also have some fuel canisters uh, on the left and right hand side of the frame that I want to pick those out in as well. So for the machine gun, for the body of the weapon, I picked that out in uh, Holly Branch. There's two thin layers of that. It's made by Apple Barrel Paint, runs 50 cents, and I did two thin layers of ripe tomato by uh, apple barrel paint as well it's a nice bright orange color and i put two thin layers on that as well and uh, that also runs at 50 cents at your local walmart as well so just once you get done with those little details now next part of course is to move on to a dry brush so for the dry brushing, I use Lime Sherbet for the weapon a casing that's on the heavy stubber. Just did a quick drill dry brush with that. And then for the fuel tanks, I did another quick dry brush using Tropic Orange by Apple Barrel Paint as well. Both those products will run you 50 cents at your local Walmart. Just do a quick dry brushing to the desired lightness that you want in your vehicle. And then you're ready to move on for your next base coat. So the very last piece we're gonna work on real quick is on the cupola for the vehicle. This is the drip passenger side cupola. As you can see in this image, I've attached a harpoon gun to the cupola as well as a, uh, a wrecking ball with a grab claw at the end of it uh, for this one as well. So what I decided to do is of course, I picked out the detail of the harpoon gun's body using holly branch real quick. So I did that, just two thin layers of that. And then also picked out the arm of the wrecking ball, uh, picked that out in two thin layers of true navy as well. So that way it matches the rest of the vehicle. And then for the cabling as well as for the tow hook, the tow 
toe, toe line for the uh, harpoon gun. I picked out that detail in Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint, two thin layers of that. All three of these products are available at your local Walmart and they cost you about 50 cents. So once you're done day swimming those, next thing you move on to now is a dry brush. So once again, I did exactly the same kind of method of dry brushing as you saw earlier in this video. For the arm that's painted in blue for the uh, Wrecking Ball, I dry brushed that in a Nidex Acrylic Slate Blue. Uh, brings out some of those details. And then I also dry brushed the uh, body of the Harpoon Gun with Lime Sherbet as well. As for the cabling for the Kiwi color, I just left that alone because I wanted that to be a very vi bright and vibrant color. So I just left that one alone for the most part. And now that we're all done with the dry brushing and base coating with the colors, now we're going to move on to the metallics and start painting on the metallics on our miniature. All right, so here's the base coating now for the tires. We're going back to the tires now. The tires in the Orc Trek has a lot of armor plating put all over the tires on these parts. So because of that, what I did is I alternated the different colors using different metallic colored paints in order to create, make it look like each tire is different. And the reason why is because I want to add this like haberdashery, ramshackled, jury rigged look to the vehicle to make it look like it kind of was pieced together by whatever was available out in the wasteland. So for this, I used Folk Arts Copper as well as Pure Gold Gunmetal Gray. All those cost you 75 cents at your local Walmart. I did exactly the same same thing with using Anita's all-purpose metallic uh, aged copper for all the lighter uh, lighter copper colors as well. It's kind of like that brassy look to it. And as you can see, it does a really beautiful job. So all you got to do, of course, is figure out what armor panels, hubcaps that you want to paint in what colors. And of course, just do that to the, to the light, uh, to whatever color that you want. And put two thin layers on this part. Now, if you're wondering why I saved the metallics at the end, is because when you're painting miniatures, you want to keep your metallic colors from your basic colors separate. Because the reason why is because when you rinse off your brushes in the water pot, uh, uh, flicks of uh, metallic color can contaminate your other colors and that's the reason why you want to keep them separate in this case so my suggestion is for you to change up the water in your water pot and then start working on the metallics at this point so with that, we go back to the uh, truck fr uh, the truck frame as well as the chassis. And once again, I just picked out some of the details I wanted in aged copper. For example, the exhaust pipes that run along the left-hand side of the engine as well as parts of the heavy stubber. I picked those out in two thin layers of aged copper. And to add a little bit more interest to the piece, I also picked out some details in copper by Folk Art as well. So things like the armor panel on the front of the radiator, as well as a portion of the armor plating for the uh, armor panel on the front. I just picked it out in two thin layers of copper as well, just to add some color variety and some interest in the miniature. All right, and the very last thing I did is I did a very light dry brush with Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. I put this on the armor plating on the front of the vehicle that, that, that I did in blue, as well as all the parts that I did in copper as well. And the reason why is because I wanted to create this like scratchy kind of weathered look to the paint job. Like there's a bunch of wind storms in the ash waste that's kind of dinged up the paint and scraped it because of erosion from wind erosion. So you can see there it kind of exposes some of the bare metal beneath and adds a really cool uh, age effect to it. So the frame we're with, you go directly to the cupola, and I did exactly the same thing with the metallic paints that I wanted for the cupola as well. So all the details that I wanted to be done in silver, I picked those out in gunmetal gray, so like armor plating on the wrecking ball, as well as the little blades on the grabbing claws. Uh, same thing with the uh, the actual like details like on the arms and things, and the chains. I also picked out some details in copper by Folk Art, some details in pure gold, as well as some details in aged copper by Anita's acrylic paints. As you can see, there has like this kind of ramshackled, kind of dreary rigged look, it just looks really bright and colorful and the same there's a lot of color variety on this piece as well and uh, that part was pretty awesome as well at the same time, I also did base coating for the rest of the miniature as well. So parts of the armor paneling that's on the truck bed as well as the cab, I picked those out exactly the same color. I used Folk Arts, a copper color for the reddish copper colors I wanted done. Gunmetal for all the parts that are going to be done in silver. I used Anniversary uh, Pure Gold for all the parts that are going to be golden, as well as Aged Copper for all the parts that are going to be copperish color on the armor panel. So like the little bits of metal that look like teeth and things, as well as uh, improvised armor plating. I just kind of picked all those details out at the same time. So here's another shot from the side. As you can see, I have some of those details of the little armor panels and armor plating as well. And the next thing you do, of course, is after you get done with that, you need to assemble your miniature. So then glue the truck bed as well as the cab to the frame as well as glue your tires onto your vehicle as well. And once that is done, the last thing you need to do, of course, is another dry brush. In this case, I use Folk Arts uh, Anniversary Silver. And what I decided to do was to do a light dry brush all over the parts of the uh, truck bed as well as the cab, the cupola, as well as the uh, boom sticks, as well as the pole vaulting poles on the top so i just did a really quick once over the dry brushing and the reason why i did that is to make it look like it's been weather worn from wind erosion it's kind of faded the color of the blue as well as the vibrancy of that bluish color as well it adds a lot of weathered effects to everything at the same time catching all those beautiful raised surfaces on the miniature with all the rivets and things as well as the diamond plating on the floor of the decking and uh, once you're done with that dry brushing the next thing you need to do now is move on to an oil wash 
So what you need to do now real quick is a quick oil wash with your miniature. As you can see here, my product of choice is to use Midwax Poly Shades. It's uh, with Mission Oak color. It's a nice, beautiful, dark color. And I cut it with a little bit of paint thinner, so that way it's not as dark. And I paint the entirety of the miniature in that stuff. And the reason why you want to do this is because the oil wash is a couple of things. First of all, it blends the different colors of dry brushing and base coating together. So that way it doesn't have that nice, it doesn't have that pastel chalky look. It kind of blends together, the colors together as well. Also adds some transitions between the highlighting as well as the base coating beneath. Another thing it also does too is it also dulls down a lot of the bright colors that you use on the miniature and it kind of makes it look a little bit more subdued. And the most important part about it is of course is that the oil wash goes into the recess of the miniature and brings out all the details so like the little individual grills for the radiator plates on the vehicle, the rivets, the texturing of the metal, um, the links of the chain, um, the fabric look of the, uh, the, the pole vaulting uh, poles as well, boarding pikes as well as the uh, boom sticks. So all you need to do of course is do a once over with the poly shades and leave it alone. Uh, my recommendations for you is to let it dry and cure for 24 hours and the reason why is that, that way it doesn't, it doesn't you don't ruin the finish on it as well now once you're done with that the next part of your course you could do the very last step is optional you could just do a once over real quick as a matte varnish um, if you like the shine look or the sheen of, uh, of the oil wash in your miniature you could of course skip this stage me however I like my miniatures to be a little bit more subdued I don't like that shine on them so I just give it a once over with some crown matte varnish and then your miniature is pretty much done and once again, here is the end result of what your miniature really look like after you use the quick cheapskate method in order to paint up your miniature. As you can see, it's at a beautiful tabletop standard, and it's ready to bring some rot and ruin and some destruction to the wilds of the ash waste of Nicaragua. And I'm super excited to see exactly how that happened. So with that being said, now ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, now that we talked about exactly how much it would cost and the materials you need to paint the cheapskate method, what we're going to do now is, of course, is show you a shopping list that we require, that you need from both Army Painter as well as Citadel in order to do exactly the same thing we do with this miniature, only using those name brand paint and show you how much money you would save on all of that. At the same time, I'm also going to show you some pictures of this vehicle with the gang I plan on using for my Nicaragua campaign. And at the same time, you can take a look at that as well. So that being said, let's get that segment on a roll. All right, so for the Citadel method of painting, what the first thing you do is, of course, is buy a can of Chaos Black Spray to do the priming for your miniature. That's going to cost you 17 bucks. The next thing you do, of course, is all the parts you do dry brushing in gray. You'll need to buy Slanesh Gray, which is four dollars and fifty-five cents for that. And for all the parts you're going to highlight in slate blue for all the detailing for the blue armor panels and for the weathering, you have to buy a pot of Frenrisian Gray, which is four dollars and fifty-five cents for that as well. Now, for the truck bed, uh, the, the truck bed as well as the cab, you'll need to buy a can of McCrag Blue Spray in order to make that blue color that's going to run you twenty dollars in order to do that at the same time if you want to do your metallic colors so all the parts are done in gunmetal all the parts are done in bright silver all the parts are done in gold as well as copper you'll need to buy lead belcher iron breaker screaming bell and retributor armor and brass scorpion all of which cost you seven dollars and eighty cents at your local games workshop uh, website or local gaming store as well so that's for all the metallic colors now for the armor paneling that we painted in the front of the truck frame of the front of the vehicle you'll need to buy a pot of McCrag blue in order to paint that that's gonna run you down four dollars and 55 cents as well now for all the details that we did in green you'll need to buy a Caliban green and for all the details that we did in orange you'll need to buy a pot of troll slayer orange and both you those run you four dollars 55 cents for those now for the parts that are done in green you'll need to dry brush that with hellion green which runs you 455 and for all the parts that are done in orange you'll need to dry brush that in luganath orange which runs you four dollars four dollars 55 cents for that as well now as for the tow cabling for the harpoon gun that we have for our miniature you'll need to buy a pot of moot green we're going to four dollars and fifty five cents for that now after you get done with that you need to do, of course buy your oil wash in this case you'll need to buy army painter strong tone in order to do your oil wash for your miniature that runs you thirty two dollars in order to do that and of course this part's optional but if you want to put a matte finish on your miniature you'll need to buy a can of munitorium varnish or runs you nineteen dollars and fifty cents for that now assuming that you purchase everything from citadel and army painter for the very first time in order to paint this way you're talking about a grand total investment of one hundred and sixty three dollars and ninety cents in order to paint it up now, if you compare that with the cost saving tips that we use with our cheapskate method of $29.91, we're talking about a grand total in savings of $133.99, which can buy you quite a bit of miniatures or better yet, not even spend it all and just keep it for something else. So there you have it guys, we're going to save you $133.99 using our cheapskate methods and how to quickly as well as cheaply paint an orc truck. So that being said ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this one. As always, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's going to do it for this one you guys, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.